Not long ago, a website called Democrats.org featured a front page article called Five Things You Should Know About Ron Paul. Ooh, wow, what's he been keeping from us? These five things, according to this website, make Ron Paul a fringe candidate. Now, of course, the word fringe, the word extreme or crazy, as anyone can see, these are obviously words that mainstream media uses to demonize anyone with the temerity to disagree with both Hillary Clinton and Mitt Romney. I mean, who would disagree with both of these titans? Obviously, only a crazy person. So let's go through them. The first item is that in 2007, it's claimed that Ron Paul said that a low flat tax would devastate, be devastating for the poor and the middle class, and that's why he opposes it. Whereas today, he favors such a thing. So I looked this up. This didn't seem right at all. And it turns out that in 2007, what he was talking about was a 30% flat tax, which maybe the Democrats consider low, but normal people don't. And Ron Paul said he was against that. The more recent proposal they're referring to is for a 10% flat tax in return for being exempt from and getting no government benefits from the major transfer programs. Well, that's rather different. The initial plan that Ron Paul was talking about in 2007 involves a 30% tax and plus you're stuck with programs that anyone with a brain knows are headed for failure within our lifetimes. So that was just a lie. The second one is that Ron Paul opposed the auto bailouts. Well, we all know the Democrats are a little bit uh, soft on this one for political reasons. I mean, there might just have been a political motivation behind the bailouts. They might have had a little something to do with the United Auto Workers and their connection to the Democratic Party. I mean, I, I hate to burst anyone's bubble on this, but there may have been something other than a disinterested commitment to the common good behind those bailouts. The taxpayer is still in the hole for these bailouts. And moreover, look at the, the consequences. Of course, now the economy operates under a presumed bailout regime for big companies. Uh, companies that are doing reasonably well, or Ford, for example, uh, now watches its competitors getting a free government money. They don't call it bailouts on Democrats.org, by the way. They call it a loan package. Okay. And then we have the fact that now, with senior creditors having been stiffed in the government's uh, rigged bankruptcy proceedings, now there is a risk premium built into corporate debt because people wonder, are they going to be next? Are they going to be cheated the way senior bondholders were cheated out of uh, their money in the auto bailout? So this is nothing particularly to cheer about, particularly when we consider that GM was losing like three to four thousand dollars per car. This is a, a wealth destruction machine. This is something that presumably we want to reorganize, uh, not not uh, throw money at, politically motivated money, I might add. Uh, then we've got that Ron Paul supposedly wants to return to the gold standard, and all sorts of economists tell us that's a bad idea. Well, all sorts of economists also told us the economy was fine in 2007. So I'm not so sure I would be using that as my bellwether. And moreover, we're told that this would bring us back to the 19th century when recessions and depressions were worse and more severe and frequent than they are now. This is just a lie, and I'm going to post at the end of this video a resource page where I'll, I'll show you the data, and you can judge for yourselves. I mean, what do you think a typical blogger at Democrats.org knows about uh, economic recessions in the 19th century? I mean, let's take a wild guess here and say it could fit inside a thimble. Uh, this is simply a lie, and moreover, you look at the, the uh, success or otherwise of the Federal Reserve System, which we got in 1913, and then they went off gold uh, later, about 20 years later, the first stage of going off gold, uh, its, its record is pretty bad. I mean, the dollar has lost like 96% of its value since that time. And basically what Ron Paul's position is, is not to return to the gold standard. Who, who could trust the government to stick to it? His position is allow competition. I mean, isn't this a free country? If you want to keep transacting in a money that loses its value constantly, go right ahead. You want to be a big sucker? Go ahead. His position simply is that take the disabilities, the artificial disabilities, off gold and silver. Uh, enforce contracts, uh, gold and silver contracts in the courts, and take capital gains and sales taxes off them. I mean, big deal. I mean, why? Oh, ooh, wow. Gee, Mitt and Hillary don't like that, so don't you dare support that citizen. 
Uh, Social Security is the fourth one. Ron Paul says Social Security is unconstitutional. Now, of course, they don't try to refute this at Democrats.org. It is sufficient refutation merely to state it. Because their view apparently is that if anything seems desirable to them or is politically popular, that makes it ipso facto constitutional. So there is no need to look into the constitutional argument. But there is a lot to be said here. Because at the time that Social Security was considered by the Supreme Court in 1937, there was concern that it would be ruled unconstitutional on the grounds that the federal government has no authority to implement an insurance program. So its advocates went out of their way to make clear this is not an insurance program, we'll downplay the insurance aspects. We know this because Tom Elliott, the general counsel to Social Security at the time, even said we have to be as opaque as possible in our language. (laughs) So I mean, we have to be as devious as we can to get this thing through. And then once it did pass constitutional muster, then we can go back to calling it an insurance program again. So I mean, obviously there's dishonesty going on here. And then what's more, we look at the question of Social Security and constitutionality. Obviously, the Supreme Court completely fell down on the job. If you actually read the decision of uh, Helvering versus Davis of 1937, Justice Cardozo was so lazy that he lifted entire paragraphs from the government's own brief and just plopped them down into his decision. I mean, you know, some people might think there's something a little fishy going on here, but don't ask questions, citizen. Shut your mouths. Instead, be upset at Ron Paul. Now, notice, of course, Ron Paul could become much more popular if he'd just shut up about things like this. If he'd just say, yep, Supreme Court has spoken, or, you know, lazily spoken, so therefore we peons aren't even entitled to an opinion anymore. He could just shut up and say that. But instead, he sticks to his views, says, I'm pretty convinced that this is the case, and we're supposed to despise him for this, even though basically nobody else in Washington operates this way. They just say whatever the popular thing is. Certainly no one would touch this question. He has the guts to do it, and we're supposed to be suspicious of him. I'd like to find uh, anybody in the Democratic Party who has ever had that degree of principle. And then finally, Ron Paul supposedly said it would be a good thing for the U.S. government to default on its debt. Well, what he actually said, and what they actually quote him as saying on Democrats.org, is not that it would be good for the government to default on its debt, although it may well be. Uh, instead, what he said was simply that it would be a good thing not to raise the debt ceiling. And at Democrats.org, they specialize in pretending those two are the same thing. They're not the same thing. Even if you didn't raise the debt ceiling, you could still meet all the interest payments. That You have no problem satisfying all the requirements Uh, with regard to government debt. No problem whatsoever. But you would have to cut spending. And you would perhaps have to sell off some government assets. Well, wonderful. I mean, a lot of us happen to think this institution is full of raving sociopaths from both the Democratic and Republican parties, and it would be a good thing for it to be brought down a notch in its influence and power. So this makes Ron Paul a so-called fringe candidate, that he dares to take opinions outside the officially approved three inches of Hillary Clinton and Mitt Romney. Well, I'd say we could use a heck of a lot more than that. So what have we found by going through these five things that we're supposed to know about Ron Paul? Basically what we've found is that the Democrats are lying propagandists. That's just a day of surprises, isn't it? All right, if you want to get more information about these points that I've made and some support for what I'm saying and the evidence, head on over to the resource page that I've prepared at tomwoods.com democrats and make sure you're able to watch all these videos and you don't miss any by subscribing to the channel at youtube.com slash tomwoodstv. Thanks for listening.